Hello guys. Let me say I'm um, welcome back because I have not been active for the past weeks or let me say month. Um, simply because I have been busy on some side project that I'm I was building. And so let me apologize to you guys for not being active. And uh, I'm done with that and now I'm back to work by providing you some awesome tutorials on Menstock. So to prove that I was busy of what I was doing, let me show you the project I was building. That, that uh, has been keeping me busy. So this is a Merenstack project I built. It's an e-commerce platform and it's fully functional and it's in production right now. So um, this uh, application that was built with Merenstack project, as, as I said, and you can see my orders. You can view update profile. You can see all orders. Of the users and you can view all payments and many many other cloud operations all right so i can add this product, uh, product to cart and then i can purchase i can set my shipping address and then proceed to checkout and uh, i can quickly pay right so when i pay it it without to show me in my um, dashboard that uh, orders has been delivered all right so i'm planning to have a series on this project and I can update an order to deliver or not delivered, as you can see. So I'm planning to have a series on this e-commerce project I'm building. So I'm thinking of bringing this one to YouTube to have a series on that. So now I'm back to work about what we are building, about main stock uh, project of book catalog. So this is where we left last time. So this is a live one. This is where we left last time about creating the profile and we were able to populate um, the users created book on the on a dashboard. So in this video, we are going to focus on how to update a user, all right, profile. So let's get started. Um, before we get started, um, like I was, I do. I put provided um, a component for creating or sorry for updating the user, and I will provide this snippet in the description below. So I created a component on the profile and I just added this component, update profile, import out, and then I have this snippet. And I added to my route here, so inside my app.js file, I added this route and the path is what user updates. So on my navbar, when I go to navbar, so this one, and where I see, um, Sorry, not my brother, but inside the profile itself, right? Um, the link that it pushed me to the component is this one. So I just push uh, connect the component with this link, as you see on it. So there's nothing more, nothing new here. So then let's get started. So when you go to the application and then I visit, sorry for up and down guys, and I click on update, I will see these forms. All right, so now let's get started by making things happen. All right, so in the first place, what comes into your mind? We have to be able to talk to the back end and then make requests. So let me show you um, the back end stuff, what we are going to target, and we know what endpoints we are going to use. So when I go to route and users route, right? And scroll down and you see update user. And let me take you through the definitions of this endpoint, even though I've explained that. But let me take my time again and go over. All right, this login, sorry, this update. And when I edit this endpoint, I require the user to log in so that I can have access to the um, user who has logged in as requested user. And I have to find the user by ID in my DB. So when everything goes on well, I get my user back, right? This is MongoDB or Mongoose. I pass in the user ID. I can fresh by username or whatever, but I want the ID which is common to all the documents you create. So when I fetch the user, then by making use of um, object um, properties, you know, objects are passed by reference. So when I make changes to the object I find the user, when I change the data here, it will reflect inside my DB, right? So when I pull the user back on the user, we have a name property because when you go to my models, 
here users we, i have what is called let me scroll i have the um name right and the email and the password that is what i'm going to where where is mine sorry um yeah this name and email i'm going to override them right so i'm going to accept the request body coming from my uh, express endpoint and then if there's no value I will pre-populate what is pre what is over there that is the existing user and if there is an email coming from my form then I'll use that otherwise I'll use the previous email and then for the password sometimes the user will not even provide the password so if you want to change the password you're also going to overwrite it like that and then because I make changes to the user in my DB I have to save it and then send the user send back this to the user all right so this is what we're going to tackle so next one is that um, let's head over to our front end so let me close all these stuff here and go to front end so next step what comes into your mind we have to make a request by make use of an action right so the first thing is that we need to create our action types this is not compulsory we can use by this by convention so i already have the the constant action types here user update request user update success as we see here so next is we have to create an action to be able to make the request to the back end all right so let's head over to our actions and then users and users action all right so for this one we have register user and then we have the login and we have the get user profile and next one is called user update that is what you are going to do in this video all right so let's get started so i'm going to make use of um arrow function here so i'll say const i will move fast a little bit because until this point we are making use of all these action creators until this point so i will name this one update um user okay update user and uh, user like this sorry and it's equal to arrow function right my arrow function and then um, sorry what am I doing all right so for this because I'm making some um, HTTP request with the promise and action might not be retained so what do I do? I have to return my async action in dispatch. Remember, I have access to dispatch because uh, I install Redux tank with a middleware to be able to suspend or let's say pause the action um, until everything or the request is done, and then we dispatch it from our uh, from our action to the various component. All right. So here, remember. We, this route is protected. We need to be able to log in before you can update the user. So the next question is that we have to authenticate the user, right? So here for this uh, act function I'm going to return, I can pass in another parameter here called get state, right? And the, the get state is important here because I want to make sure that I have the login user, all right? And I pass in the token to the request so here i will say i'll make use of try and catch here and then um, inside the dispatch i will dispatch my first um, action in the user update request all right this one no sorry it's not register it's user update request right all right so i think i have auto import here uh user update request is this one sorry scroll down user update request yeah i believe it's that one okay good so here we have to make the actual request right sorry so next is we are going to make the actual call to the endpoint right so because this endpoint is protected we need to pass in some token to be able to access the endpoint i'm referring to that is a 
update profile endpoint in my backend. So here, let's create some config files. Or, yes, but let's grab the user from our store. Okay, is equal to um, for get state, the get state holds the entire state in our application. So when head over to our application, let me open this one um, in a new tab here, my Redux Dev extension tool here. And when I click on state, right, the get state represents this one, but I want to grab only what I care about, that's the user login, and I destructure the user info. That's what I'm doing here right now. So on that, because remember, a function is an object I and mean, we can append some properties on the function, right? So here, what we care about is a user login as I showed you. And I only want to destructure the user info. All right, so here, when you try to console log user info dot token, here, user info dot token, I have this token back. All right, so, Next is um, we have to pass in some config files. So what you are doing is a way of passing some headers which has the token as we did in the postman. So this is how you do it in the, when I want to make requests from the front end. So I'll pass some headers and then for the headers, I have content type of applications like JSON, JSON sorry. And like I always say that um, Express automatically pass the incoming request as JSON, but by convention, it is passing as well. So here, the authorization is what I'm going to pass in my bearer, right? Because the key associated to my token is a bearer inside my backend. So here, I want to inject, pass in the, the token and the user info, I have the token on the user info. All right, so now I have my authentication request being done so here comes the actual request, all right? So I want to make request, let me call this one response, all right? So the response is equal to await, and then axios dot post, sorry, dot put, because we are going to make some changes. And the end point you are going to hit is api slash users slash profile slash Update. Remember, let me show you where I'm getting this endpoint from. It's in my backend folder. So when I head over to my server where I have calling the route, right? So I have the user route, the base is API users, and inside the route itself, where is it? Um users route, right? Where where is it? Uh updates profile. Yeah. So it to be API users profile, right? So it to be like this. Um, API, sorry, where is it? Let me show you the endpoint. It to be API users, and then um, Slack profile. So my mistake here, there is no update here. Let me know. So user profile, or can you add updates? Right. So if I do this, then I have to add the. So in my front end, sorry, my back end, I have to add profile slash update so that it's in line so the base is what in my server i have it as uh, api users and then slash profile slash update that is what i'm making use of here in my yeah okay so let me move fast i don't want this video to be long so next is um you have to pass in the the request right the actual data but remember this um request requires some some data we are getting from the front end like the actions a transporter going to the front end grab the details we want and give it to the, this endpoint and our express server will do the manipulation right so here we pass in the name email and the password this is what we need to update the profile right so i'll pass in a second per argument here to my end to my request and then I'll pass in the all the individuals email and password. Remember, if if the um, name and the property are the same from ES6, we can just pull out the property to something like this one: email semicolon email, right? But for ES6, like I said, we can choose to do it like this. 
So here, I don't want to do something like rest of data. So I'll destructure my response as my data here. And voila. Now we believe that we have the request done. We have to dispatch as um, an action called user update success, right? Auto import, right? And if something goes wrong, right? Let me copy the error because we have been doing this one until now. Um, the same one here, you can copy the error, right? That you are getting back. All right, so let me copy this one to move fast. The dis dispatch the error, able to trap the error in my front end. So here I'll paste something here and then you can copy them. I've explained a couple of times. So let me reiterate this one. So for the payload, in case there's some error, we want to have a friendly error, right? So we will grab the response. In case there's a response on the error, then we want to grab the data and the message, right? But if there's no message, um, then we, we have the default one, default error message, right? So here, when everything goes on well, you have to send a payload. We forgot to send a pay payload as what data. Mm -hmm. All right, like so. So let me, the last part is for let me update, export it. So update user. So we are good to go. Now our action is done. The next video, we are going to create a reducer to handle it and then we connect to our store. So thanks for watching.